Hello, and welcome back to your hotspot channel, In Times News and Reality. Welcome back, family. I am your host. Is CBDC busy preparing the world for the mark of the beast? Let's go over to Fox News and see what they have to say on Big Brother controlling your wallet. Picture this. You're at a gas station. You have enough money to fill up your tank, but you can't because you spent too much money on fossil fuels this month. Or your car declines when going to re-up on ammunition for your guns. According to new data, that's the world's 68 countries, including the U.S., are moving towards with the development of central bank digital currencies. Our next guest has warned of the extensive overreach that this would allow, where all purchases must be cleared through the government. They can even limit your savings as well. If Trump finds his way back to the Oval Office, he says CBDC will never see the light of day. I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency, which is a method of stealing your money. The freedom that comes with a $20 or $100 bill, you can spend it on anything. But when government controls currency, they're going to control you and me and all Americans. That's exactly right. And essentially, you know, people wonder, what, what is a, a digital currency? Specifically, what is a central bank digital currency? It's basically the government version of a cryptocurrency. And like the government version of most things, it's pretty terrible. Unlike something like Bitcoin, where you and I can transact with each other, and it doesn't have to go through anyone else, a central bank digital currency has to go through a central authority. So these CBDCs can be traced, they can be tracked, they can be taxed. Every single cent, because every single cent has a unique fingerprint. At any moment in time, the government will always know where every single cent of its currency is around the world in your wallet, in my wallet, in anywhere else. So in, as you've written, any government apparatchik who doesn't believe in the Second Amendment could make a decision to bar someone from buying not just a weapon um, that's legal, but also ammunition. How close are some governments to rolling out these digital currencies. It's very scary. Some governments are incredibly close. They already have pilot programs going. If you look at a country like China, for example, they are essentially just tacking this on to their social credit score system that they already have in place and, and have had for some time. And sometimes when I uh, try to warn people about CBDCs and the dangers that go along with them, people think that these are all like conspiracy theories. I'm simply quoting from people of organizations like the the World Economic Forum, where they're already talking about using CBDCs as a way to control people. Make no mistake, central bank digital currency is not a monetary system. It is a social credit system in which the governments of the world will tell you how you can spend your money. The latest round of violent weather across the country, powerful storms breaking out overnight in the Gulf Coast, a day after a deadly string of 15 tornadoes in the heartland. ABC's Alex Perche is in Lakeview, Ohio with more. And Alex, that area has just been hammered by these storms. You walk this neighborhood, you can see just how powerful this storm really was. I mean, it ripped the front of this house completely off. The owner says that his kids usually sleep upstairs. Thankfully, they weren't home at the time. But this morning, as they are cleaning up, so many here feel lucky, feel fortunate, because they know things could have been much, much worse. Oh, no. This morning, communities digging out from damage dealt by at least 15 tornadoes across seven states, stretching from Texas to Indiana. A deadly outbreak blamed for killing at least three people and leaving entire neighborhoods in ruin. The hardest hit, Ohio. This is the aftermath in Logan County from an EF3 tornado with winds of at least 136 miles per hour. Three dying in the storm, at least 20 sent to the hospital. You look at what's left on the ground from this home and it's a, it's a pile of splinters and, and around the corner, I mean, this, this is just utter destruction. Just seen it crime, I guess. In Lakeview, Ohio, Blaine Schmidt showed us how he survived the storm by crawling into his bathtub and praying. Today, the front of his home completely gone. He's thankful his wife and two kids weren't home at the time. It's just unreal. It's unreal. But you still have your family. Yeah, my family's everything important to me still here. A tornado also touching down in Crawford County. 
uprooting trees and flattening homes, with residents forced to clean up what's left. It was just, just really, really loud. I mean, you hear people say you hear a train or a loud, believe me, it was just, you couldn't hear hardly yourself talk. That's a big one. He's other states feeling the blow of the storm too. In Arkansas, this frightening scene as an EF2 tornado tears up everything in its path. This drone video showing the destruction near Little Rock. While other parts of the state dealing with flash flooding, more than half a foot of rain in some areas. And tornadoes in Indiana. Measles infections are on the rise. There are now 60 confirmed or suspected cases in 17 states. That's more than the total number of cases for all of last year and we're only halfway through March. Chicago is the latest city to be hit with measles. To see an uptick in cases uh, where we haven't seen cases in the last five years is concerning for us. 12 confirmed cases so far, including 10 connected to the city's largest migrant shelter. Today, city health officials announced a new policy aimed at stopping the spread. Now migrants are required to get the MMR vaccine before going into shelters. Tell me the reason behind that. We want to safeguard the health of new arrivals. And as long as measles is circulating in our city, they can get sick. City health officials launched a mass vaccination campaign for migrants. Over 900 vaccinations were administered really in response to really doing the strategies that we know work to uh, contain measles outbreaks. This asylum seeker from Venezuela told CBS News he was vaccinated soon after arriving. Nationwide, measles vaccination rates have fallen since 2019. About 93% of kindergartners were vaccinated last year, falling short of the CDC's 95% goal. The first measles outbreak this year was in Pennsylvania, followed by outbreaks in 16 other states, including six cases at an elementary school in South Florida. There are a lot of people that are not vaccinated right now that need to be vaccinated. To stop. People around the world are asking what is going on. Everything seems to be falling apart in every possible way. Violence is at epidemic levels, with all the nations around the world full of anxiety and uncertainty of what tomorrow will bring. The Middle East is consumed by civil wars. Planet Earth is on the verge of World War III. Earthquakes are more frequent and more intense. Extreme weather has become the norm. We are seeing diseases that were once eradicated, roaring back to life. People are starving to death because of politics war, drought, and other weather-related catastrophes. People are looking for answers. And those who have eyes to see, and ears to hear, know exactly, what is happening. Jesus, who is God in flesh form, is letting us know, that through the events taking place around the world, He is returning. Overseas now and major developments in the Israel-Hamas war. Israel's war cabinet approving a plan to go after Hamas militants in Rafah and southern Gaza, including, they say, evacuating 1.4 million displaced Palestinians who have taken refuge there. And it comes as the first shipment of desperately needed aid has arrived in Gaza by sea. Tonight, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announcing plans for that controversial offensive into the southern Gaza city of Rafah to hunt for Hamas. The IDF says it would move 1.4 million Palestinians to humanitarian islands in central Gaza. They will provide them temporary housing, food, water, field hospitals. The U.S. officials say they've seen no plan. We have to see a clear and implementable plan, not only to get uh, civilians out of harm's way, but also to make sure that once out of harm's way, they're appropriately cared for. Amid a growing rift with Netanyahu, President Biden today praising Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's blistering rebuke of the Israeli leader. I think he uh, expressed a serious concern shared not only by him, but by many Americans. Today, the first maritime shipment of aid arriving off the coast of Gaza, but distribution of the aid remains a challenge. The hunger is killing us, said this man. I'm still going to go to Rafa so I can eat and feed my children. But Rafa may not be a refuge for much longer. When Hamas has presented a new ceasefire proposal that would see about 40 Israeli hostages released in exchange for up to 1,000 Palestinians from Israeli prisons, Netanyahu has called that unrealistic. Still, he is sending a delegation to Doha for negotiations. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament, prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17 1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Elam which could infer an Israel attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey, will attack Israel in the last days, in order to take Israel's wealth. Luke 21, 25, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, is nations will be in a state of perplexity, or uncertainty, over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Humanitarian crisis in Haiti is worsening as escalating gang violence rips the Caribbean nation apart. On Friday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the plan to create a transitional presidential council on the island is moving forward after the prime minister was forced to resign. The transitional governing body aims to restore stability in a country where political turmoil is driving a rise in hunger. <laughs> Chaos and unease in Haiti's capital. This week, the main prison there was set on fire. Violence that has plagued the nation for years escalated since a brazen prison break there two weeks ago, forcing thousands to flee their homes. <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore, this man says. I was shot at. Tear gas is being used against us. It's a crime against humanity. At the border with the Dominican Republic, the gates have opened, with tens of thousands of Haitians pouring in. But there's a catch. They can only travel a hundred yards into the country, and they all need to be back in Haiti before sundown. It's a small window, a couple of days a week, for Haitians to shop for goods at this open-air market. Most carry back what they can, on foot, pushing carts, even on their head. When the market reopened today, men were put on one side, women and children on another side. Dominican officials tell us this has been happening ever since the prison break. The market is the lifeblood on both sides of the border, now choked ever since the crisis in Haiti escalated. About 75% less customers. Yes. Tomas Liberato, who runs this live chicken coop, says he is at risk of bankruptcy. So you used to sell about 5,000 chickens. You're down to 250 to 500 chickens. Due to the crisis in Haiti, some customers have stopped coming. Gangs block the roads to the border. They steal chickens from his customers. And then there's the day's Dominican officials shut it down. On Friday, this was the scene as Haitians rushed the border and it had to be temporarily closed. Sometimes it doesn't reopen. Border tensions remain high. Friday night, just about 100 yards behind me on the Haitian side of the border, gunfire rang out. And then earlier in the week, two Haitian nationals attempting to cross the border were shot by a Dominican soldier. One was killed. In war-torn Sudan, nearly 230,000 children, pregnant women and new mothers could die from hunger in the coming months unless urgent life-saving funding is released to help them. That's according to international NGO Save the Children. It revealed that nearly 3 million children are already acutely malnourished and up to 730,000 children under five are suffering from severe acute malnutrition. It comes as the destruction of fields and factories in a civil conflict, which has raged for almost a year, has disrupted food production and its distribution across the country. According to the United Nations, the fighting could trigger the world's largest hunger crisis, as more than half of the Sudanese population, including 14 million children, require humanitarian assistance to survive. This is what's known as the Ramadan rush. People come to markets such as this one in the city of Tyres to stock up on special foods and buy gifts for their loved ones. But for many Yemenis, their excitement this Ramadan is mixed with tension. There are concerns about the lack of access to food supplies, especially as military operations affect international shipping in the Red Sea. This affects the entry of food, and it's natural for people to be concerned under these circumstances. Life in Yemen has been unstable for years, with war and frequent outbreaks of violence. 
Houthi attacks on commercial ships that began in November have severely disrupted global trade. In response, American and British warplanes have been carrying out joint attacks on suspected Houthi weapon sites. What's happening in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden in relation to the military attacks by the Houthi militias has cast a shadow on the economic situation. It's led to an increase in the cost of shipping goods and the cost of insuring them. As a result, this issue has added to the already deteriorating economic situation and has led to food shortages in the markets. Traders who've been working here for years say business is bad. We are being affected by poor sales. When people don't come to buy from us, our goods stay here for a long time. It's not an exaggeration to say some of them are spoiling. As the Houthis, the UK and the US continue their military confrontations, people here hope for a time of peace without financial burden. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe if you like my channel. Family, stay alert, stay aware, don't be scared, and always be prepared. Love ya all. Peace out.